Am I on? There it goes. All right. Just want to make sure that everybody online can hear us this morning. We are on our second Sunday of doing worship differently. Uh, I do not have photos to put up uh, this morning because nothing really changed a whole lot since last week. It's amazing that in uh, the tearing down part, in like two days, they can do a whole lot of work. And then as they put stuff back, it's really slow because they're doing a really excellent job. But uh, um, keep those of you that have Facebook. There is uh, updates um, on a almost daily basis of uh, the photos that are going in, and uh, everything is looking really great. part of the kingdom. What it means to be a part of uh, God's family and building uh, God's creation. Today we are looking at the Beatitudes. Uh, I know that you know we get to this point every year, and we always get to the Beatitudes. But I've got a, a slightly different approach for you uh, this morning than what we've looked at in the past. As I looked at what it meant and what they mean and, and what it means for us as a church. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. Blessed are we. Blessed are we. Blessed are we.
Uh, Bev Nolte, as she recovers from her stroke, they've had some good news, but at the same time, it's still questionable as to whether, are there any joys or concerns that uh, you'd like to lift up? And is there any online? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know it's, there's a, those of you that are online, there's a long delay between going up from here and coming back down to Ann. So uh, if you have a prayer, just put it on there and I will see it later. So. Oh, sounds warmer than here. So <laughs> they drove on ice. No, I said it was icy chilly. Oh, okay, <laughs> chilly in Arizona is not the same as chilly in Iowa. I don't care what he says. Are there any other joys or concerns for this morning? Then let us take this time to join together in our unison prayer, and then I'll lead us through a time of pastoral prayer, silent prayer, and then the Lord's prayer. So let us pray. O oh God of great blessing, you are the treasure that we desperately seek. You are the answer to every question. Forgive us for the sins we have committed in thought and word and deed. Have mercy upon us. Transform us into your image. May we be a great blessing to others and bear the good fruit of your spirit. Amen. Lord, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon those of us gathered here, upon those who have gathered around their devices, around this region, this state, this nation, this world, that we join together as kin, as your relations, as part, so that we can continue to love and to live in a way that brings others to you and glory to your name. So Lord, come, sit with us now. Did you guys go out and make snowmen this morning? Why not? It's a little icy. Burr is a little cold. Yeah, this isn't good snowmaking weather, is it? No, you need the wet, the wet, packy stuff that's going to be coming in March. That's usually the best stuff. So today I'm talking about the, what's called the Beatitudes. Can you guys say that word? Beatitudes. And it's kind of really important. A lot of people think like the Ten Commandments are really important. But really, the Beatitudes really define the world around us and we as Christians. Because it says some things like, um, blessed are the poor in spirit, you know, the people are sad, and blessed um, are the pure in heart, and blessed are the, um, those who um, are you when, when people pick on you and you stay to be a still a nice person. Blessed are those who are hungry for righteousness, which means you want to do the right thing. Blessed are those who are, are mourning and feeling bad about something. So it gives us a whole list of stuff that we know that Jesus wants us to be kind of responsible for. So what is your best thing that you do? Okay, Lake, yours is your smile, I'm going to tell you right now. Yes. And Gage, yours is your willingness to help. And Claire, yours is your pure energy. No, Lauren, I'm sorry. Lauren, it's your pure energy. Because Claire doesn't have your pure energy. She might eventually, but right now, I love your energy. And Preston, it's just your, your, your willingness just to love whoever you are at. And Braxton, for you, you are blessed because you are willing to try stuff new. At least that's what I see. Those I see as your blessings. So I want you to take those and use those to bring about happiness and joy to God. Can you think you can do that? So smile, energy, volunteering, loving, and experimenting. All right, so let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for our blessings. And help us to help others with the gifts that you've given us. So thank you, Jesus, for loving us, and we love you. Amen. All right. So, brand new tree, help yourself. As they are getting their suckers and going back to their seat, our scripture lesson this morning comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, and it is the Beatitudes. And like I said, I don't know how many of you remember. It, it seems to have gone out of the news now for a while. There was a long time when there was this big fight to put the Ten Commandments 
in every courtroom, and the Ten Commandments on the city squares, and oh, we, we just, or, or the fight to remove them. Well, you know, people can fight over whatever they want to fight, but I often thought, and, I, and it was confirmed as I read today, you know, the Beatitudes would be a whole better thing to put up as our definition, the New Testament stuff that Jesus said versus the Old Testament stuff, because there's something about a quell, a, I sing a song of the saints of God, and it is one that uh, Joy pointed out to me. It is one that we sang not that long ago, but it is very, very fitting for uh, what it is that uh, I want to uh, lift up to you that God has placed upon uh, my heart, and we will sing all the verses. <laughs> So today, as we look at the Beatitudes, as we look at these teachings of Jesus there on the mountaintop, this is going to be the scene where he's going to feed 5,000. This is where we get a lot of what Jesus taught and did in this big one moment. But I want to go back just a little bit in Matthew as we prepare for looking at what it means to be blessed. For Jesus, if you remember was baptized by John in the Jordan. And he then went off and was into the wilderness to prepare himself for the next three years of ministry. And he spent 40 days fasting and wandering, thinking and praying and being tempted. The story goes that Satan showed up three times and tempted him with food, power, prestige, and all of them, Jesus rebuked Satan and said, go away. He then came out of the wilderness and went about picking 12 disciples, 12 people that he could teach, could help, could be part of his first kingdom building activity, who would be able to take his message and move forward. He then went about doing some miracles. I believe he did a lot of those in order to, to, well, to alleviate the suffering, to bring healing to those who might have been lost, but he also did it to partially to start to establish in the mind, especially of his disciples, that he was the Messiah. He was the Son of God, coming to proclaim and to build the kingdom of God, to make all of us kin, brothers and sisters, ring of circle, and then the rest of the crowd that had been following filled the rest of the side of the mountain. Often when we think of, of this scene, we think of Jesus standing on the top of the mountain preaching to this multitude out in the valley. Well, 
when you all get to come with me sometime to Bethlehem and to Palestine and to Israel, we will go to this site and the tour guide will tell you that that is not the way preachers worked back then or even today. Jesus would have stood close to the base of the mountain with the sea behind him and all the people in an amphitheater-like theater in front of him so that they could hear him. Because if you know anything about acoustics, if you stood on top and everybody was below you, they're not going to hear anything because your voice is going to go out and it's going to get fainter down below. So Jesus standing on what would have probably been a path, a trailway along the Sea of Galilee, started to teach, started to preach, started to let them know what it was that his kingdom was going to be based on. And like I, like I mentioned earlier with the, uh, the fact that you know, he didn't start with the Ten Commandments. He didn't say that these are the things that I am going to build my kingdom upon. No, that's what Moses built the beginning on. No, he's going to transform, reform, and allow a new sense of being be in here. Now, one of the things that when I preached the Beatitudes in the past, and I've had people tell me that, you know, when they look at those, it's like, that's impossible. I can't do that. I can't be somebody who helps somebody mourn and who's, who's, you know, all that list of the Beatitudes. I can't do all of that. Well, Jesus isn't asking you to do all that. Jesus isn't even setting up a classification of job description that you have to somehow fill into it. He starts off with, if you remember in the Beatitudes, every one of them starts with blessed are or blessed. Well, the word in Hebrew, which I cannot say, I practiced it yesterday, it's not rolling off my tongue, and I'm, so I'm not, I said, I'm just not going to try. It starts with an M, has an O-I at the end of it, but it means happy, blissful, giddy. Okay, so it's not, it's not an action of outwardness. It's, an action, it's, an outward, or it's not an action of Jesus outward, God outward onto us. It's a reaction of us upward and outward. So happy are the poor in spirit, or giddy are the poor in spirit. Now that sounds really kind of odd, doesn't it? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Giddy are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Giddy are the meek. Giddy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Giddy are the merciful. Happy, giddy are the pure in heart. Giddy are the peacemakers. Giddy are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. And giddy are you when you are being reviled. Jesus was setting a standard of what, how you should feel as you try, as you do these things. These, you don't have to be a peacemaker. You don't have to bring peace to the world. You just got to be somebody and be happy about the fact that if there's a, an argument, if there's a fight, maybe you can be the peacekeeper. Or maybe you just have a peaceful attitude around you the whole time. These are ways for us to be blessed as we act this way. John Wesley, as I've often said, had words about the fact that we needed to work towards perfection. And that perfection is our goal. If not right before we get to heaven, we will get it when we get to heaven. Well, these actions in the Beatitudes are part of our action and reaction to the world as we move forth in Christianity. People should be able to use these as ways of knowing that we are Christian. They, they, may, you know, they look at us and say, that person is so peaceful. I wish I could be that peaceful. I wish I could be that kind of a, of a peacemaker, a, a person that works within that kind of stuff. I wish I could be somebody who helps people mourn by mourning with them. I had a funeral yesterday, and I'm always amazed by our funeral directors, Henry Bentley, who is a, a lifelong friend of mine, and now Tony, who I've become his friend. You know, that is a job calling that I have always been amazed at, because I couldn't do that. 
I couldn't be a hospice chaplain. That's not, that's not my gifts, to sit with somebody on a daily basis, somebody else, to bring all of this together, and you will be giddy. Boy, is that quite the reaction as I look out there. There we go, that's a little bit better. It's like, okay, getting you guys giddy is going to be really a tough job, but uh, there is something about doing God's work that can bring you to that, that level. There's something about persevering through the trials and the tribulations that come with all of the ones that we just read here, mourning and persecution and uh, righteousness, that when you get to the other side, when you get to see that glimpse of God in your life and in the life of your community, there is a giddiness. There is uh, a goose bumpiness. There is a, a, an overwhelming warmth that can come about because the Holy Spirit has been working through you and then all of a sudden you realize it too. Sometimes the hardest part as a pastor and for a church is getting to you, to getting you and you guys to realize that you are already doing a lot of God's work and just claim it. Proclaim it. And go out and continue to do it in that venue. Naming that. Because People want, people want what we have. You may be thinking, oh, I don't have anything. Well, you do. You've got a church family. You've got a, you've got a personal family. You've got this community that will support you and be with you. And we have all of these beatitudes, these attitudes of how to be. I'm not sure that's quite the right definition of it, but it works. It, uh, that'll, that it, is, it is enticing to the outside world. It is amazing when, when I walk around and they don't get it. And I said, well, just try it. And one of the things that, and I've often done this at camp and especially in, church, in Christian mission trips with the youth and so forth, is that when you have an opportunity like a mission trip or a camp or some other event, it's a time for you to experiment with being purely Christian. Even if you don't think you got it. Just try it. Put it on for size. Put it on that you hold the doors. Somebody sneezes, you say, God bless you. Not just bless you. Or, you know. If somebody is crying, you go over and ask them what's the matter. If somebody is down and out, somebody doesn't have quite enough money at Casey's to finish paying their bill, throw the dollar in there and help pay it forward. And when they say, well, you know, and if they ask you, why are you doing that? I know I've been telling you to say that God loves you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. That might be a little uncomfortable, but you can just say, because that's what God expects me to do, is to help out those who are in temporary need or in long-term need, and I'm happy to do it. One of my best, and I think I've shared it, but one of, one of my heartwarming memories is I took a group to New York City. It was, a, it was the trip that I announced that I was coming here, and they had a, a blizzard in New York, and it... Uh, uh, standstill. But when they closed the subways, everything was shut down. We were stuck in the YMCA of Central Park for two days. And our Midwestern kids thought it was heaven because, you know, it was snow and fun and cold and I just stayed inside. But they, uh, when they went to the store to get us like groceries, they were actually helping push taxis out of the snow. They were gathering up and doing things and, and they, were, they, they were able to proclaim it. People wanted to know why they did it. And they said, it's because what we were supposed to do. We're on a mission, Christian mission trip and you needed help and you were stuck in the snow and we know how to push people out of the snow. And uh, they, were, they were so, I'm gonna, and I'm going to use the word again, they were so giddy when they got back to the why. They, they just were bubbling with this experience of how they were able to help in a way that they never thought was actually helping that much. But they were a unique persona in the midst of that big city. So that is your job this next week, to be a unique persona in the midst of the normal and the common, whether that be at work, whether that be uh, in your home, whether that be in your community, whether that be on your campus, whatever that may be, God is calling you to be a unique, loving, blessed, giddy, happy person that others can see and that you can proclaim 
God's love. So let us pray. Lord, this morning I ask that you continue to pour out your spirit upon us as we gather here and as we go out into this world, that you may continue to love us, to lead us, and to help us to be giddy about the things that you are doing in our lives that we can show and live as examples to others. Lord, we ask all this in your precious name. Amen. As we uh, come to our time of uh, offering, there is a, um, a way for all of those of you here. You can just leave your offering at the plates at either door. Those of you that are online uh, can write a check and mail it into Post Office Box 57, Wilton, Iowa, 52778. Or anybody can go to our website, umcofwilton.org. There's a link on the website to click to uh, give uh, online. And that will go to help us be a giddy church, to be a blessed church. Because we have been blessed. We have been able to um, pay all of our bills. We've been able to, uh, you know, we're doing a, a wonderful, picked out $1,000 worth of giving that they're going to give from their Sunday school money. And, uh, and they were, I'm not sure they were giddy about it, but they were, you know, they, they were excited about, um, I'm going to let you know, they're buying $500 worth of goats. They thought that was really cool. <laughs> and they're going to give $500 to uh, uh, some kids in need for uh, school supplies and that type of stuff. So, um, but they were, as we come to our announcements, I do not have these written down, so i got to make sure I get up here. Uh, sewing group is meeting. They, uh, they, they met and they did well at 1.30. So uh, make sure you wipe your feet when you get there. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and I know that uh, I think uh, Melanie, Melanie has a lesson. And I can't remember who else is the host with you off the top of my head. But I guess that's not overly important. Yeah, <laughs> it's important for you, but it's, I don't know. If it's, um, but uh, the other thing is I wanted to let you know that I will be, and I are going on vacation. We leave next uh, Saturday, and we will be at Disney World. So those of you that follow us on Facebook, just be ready for lots of photo dumps as we do all of that. And uh, I'll be back. We fly back the Sunday the 12th. So if you have uh, any needs arise, um, call the church office. And the reason I say to call the church office is not so you can leave a message there. That forwards automatically to my cell phone, which will be given to Mark, so that he can then disperse or help figure out anybody's uh, needs or so forth. Yes, Audrey? Margaret Henderson. Margaret Henderson. There you go. Yep. <laughs> We could have just said Margaret and then covered a lot of bases, right? <laughs> Might have gotten a few of them uh, um, excited. But so, so for that, that seven days or whatever, uh, if you need anything, uh, give the church call, leave a message. Mark will be able to pick it up on the uh, voicemail uh, if need be and, and send you in the right direction. Uh, United Methodist Men, the soup lunch is coming up here in about uh, three weeks. It'll be here. Um, so uh, is it two weeks? Yes. Yeah, it's two weeks. Thank you. Um, so you, will, you might be worshiping at tables. I'm going to let the men decide however you're going to do that. Um, but it will be a time of community, a time of fun. Uh, it's a time of fun. It'll be a time of food and some fun and some fellowship. Um, the remodeling project, as you heard, I told you that it's going well. Um, the basic, the, the whole north side is pretty much off limits while they're working so that the dust is contained. Um, they are going to be pouring. I will let you, they're going to pour concrete this week. The front pad up front is going to get poured. Uh, the rough in electrical is done, um, and uh, so watch Facebook, and uh, you'll get uh, a lot of other stuff. Uh, other announcements: It's time to start collecting your ham bones. You've probably all been waiting for that message, haven't you? Audrey just can't wait to make ham bone soup. I can tell. So if you got ham bones, freeze them, hang on to them. We'll give you a collection method at some point in time mid-March. That's the Habitat for Humanity luncheon that is down at uh, uh, Muscatine Wesley. And uh, uh, I know I have one or two that uh, I remember during Christmas to say, oh, can I have that? And threw it in the freezer. So if you make a ham or have a ham bone, the um, mission team will be looking to, uh, to gather that up for the next uh, Habitat luncheon. There, there is a house that's going to be dedicated this spring, and then they'll start another one late summer or fall um, coming up. Are there any other announcements that we can run a microphone out to? Day for cookies after. Day for cookies, yes, there are cookies. Yum, so, oh, that got, that got Lauren's attention. Ooh, <laughs> cookies. 
if there are no, and the other good thing is, I mean, the good, some of you may say the other good thing about being here with a lack of other stuff is we're going to look like we're going to get out about 15 minutes early. So uh, uh, you can beat the Presbyterians to the cafe <laughs> if, uh, uh, for one, because all you have to do is walk. You don't even have to drive and get a different uh, parking place. So with that, let us join together in our responsive benediction. Blessed are we, for God is with us. Rejoice! Therefore, go and be a blessing, be giddy, be happy in this world. And all God's people said, Amen. So let us close with a hymn of promise. It's number 707 for those of you that have the hymnal. <laughs>